Okay, um, welcome to video one of three. Uh, we will be making a part in the PCB123 version 4 software. First part is going to be creating a footprint. And for this footprint, I've selected the PIC 18F26J50 that you see on your screen. And I went to the DigiKey website to find the data sheet. And I've already downloaded the data sheet. And here is the part. I'm going to create the SSO, SSOP footprint. And I believe it's uh, the footprint is on page 534. So this is the package, uh, the package dimensioning. And then on the next page, 535, is where the recommended uh, footprint is. Uh, recommended land pattern is shown. So this is what we're going to use to create this footprint. Uh, down below are the measurements that we're going to need and we can begin so obviously the first thing we're going to do is open up PCB123 And then go ahead and uh, select Done on the splash screen. And I'm just going to go ahead and close the new board wizard and create a new board. And I'm not going to set any dimensions here because we're just going to create a footprint and not really get into the layout at this time. So once the new board is in view, I'm going to go up to Design and select New Footprint. Okay, so from the recommended land pattern that is provided in the data sheet for this part, I see that the pitch of the part is the uppercase E, which is 0.65 millimeters, and the distance between the two rows of pins is uppercase C, which is 7.2. So I can set both of those uh, dimensions as my grid and that's what I plan on doing so I'm gonna press the G key on the keyboard to set the grid and my X dimension is going to be uh, 0 0.65 and my Y dimension and I'll enter that as uh, X comma Y will be C which is 7.2 um, what uh, what I actually will want to do is actually cut the uh, divide these numbers both in half so I can uh, space no, them evenly no. around the origin so I'm going to change this to point three two five and uh, three point six. And say OK. So if you um, if you're at this point and you don't see the edit panel, you 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 really want the edit panel open. So what you'll do, I'm going to go ahead and close it so you can see. Uh, without the edit panel, we want uh, we're missing a lot of information that we're going to use to create this part. So if you don't see the edit panel, select the view, and then edit panel, and there it is. Um, we've already set the grid. And so now we want to make sure the grid is visible because that will help us in placing our and creating this part. So here on the left hand side is a box labeled grid. And the uh, I'm going to click left click in the, the on the red X to the left and then select visible. And so now I can see my grid. But uh, I'd like to actually see the grid lines. Oh, you know, I forgot to change my units to millimeters. So my grid is ginormous. And so let's fix that. So back to grid, uh, 0.325 by uh, 3.6. And now we're working in millimeters. And so the grid is very small now, so I will need grid lines just to see it. And you still can't see them because they are very small. So as I zoom in, and I'm using the, the, roller, the rolling ball on my mouse and rolling it forward to zoom in and rolling it backwards to zoom out, and that uh, will bring up the working grid that we will be using. 
So this target here that is kind of hidden by the reference designator, I will move out of the way, the reference designator, and then this here, this uh, target in the center of the screen is the origin of the board, and I want to place my part so everything is centered around the origin. So in this part, I have 28 pins, so I'm going to have 14 pins on each side. I want to evenly space those pins around the origin on both sides of the origin. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by selecting the Add Pin Tool. And by default, the Add Pin Tool gives me a round pad. And so when I go to the top section of the edit panel, you can see that the pin properties is now shown after selecting the Add Pin Tool. In here, you see there's pin number one, and I have a pad width, pad height, and hole size. There's also a box for non-plated. This allows you to create a, a uh, just a, a standard drilled hole to the board. So um, in this case, we do not want a hole in the board and what we'd rather have is a surface mount pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here to the top section of the edit panel labeled pin properties and I'm going to go ahead and change the hole size and I'm going to click on the, the drop down menu, scroll to the top of the list and select none. So now I have a surface mount pad. There's no hole in the pad. And so I'm also going to need to change the geometry to a rectangle which activates the height field. And now I'm going to take the dimensions from the data sheet, uh, the recommended land pattern, and I'm going to use those to create the part that I need here. So I have a dimension X1 and Y1, which will determine, uh, tell me the size of the pad I need. So I have a 0.45 and 1.75. So let's enter those dimensions here. Okay, so here's my pad. So I want to enter, uh, I'm going to go ahead and place these pads, and I want seven on each side. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start here. One, two, sorry, 14 on each side. So place 14 pins, and, and I want them to I want them set, uh, surrounding the origin. Right now they're not, so I'm just going to select them all, and I just uh, drag I just I just drag a box around all the pins to highlight them, select them, and then I just click and hold on one of the pins and scoot it over till it's um, surrounding the origin, just evenly split by the origin. So here's my center point. I can see the grid line. I'm right between pins seven and eight, so I'm right in the center. So now what I'm going to do is I need 28 pins. So I'm going to highlight this entire row again, and I'm going to select Control C on my keyboard. I'm going to move up to where I want these pads to finally lie, and I'm just going to select Control V, and I've placed the second row of pins. Now, if you look at the numbering, I have 1 through 14 on the bottom, but then I have 28 through 15 on the top. So I need to I need to rotate this row of pins. So I'm just going to highlight the entire row, move my mouse out away from those pins, and press the R key to rotate. And so now I have pin 1, pin 14, pin 15, oops, pin 15, and pin 28. So now my pins are all in the correct orientation. So really all I need to do now is create the silk screen outline. So back to the data sheet to determine the size of the part. And from the data sheet, I see that the part is D by E1. And in this case, D is about 10.2 millimeters. And E1 is 5.3. So I'm just going to go ahead and set my grid again to half of each of those dimensions. So it's long, so I want my X to be 5.1 and my Y to be uh, 2.65. And so the grid changes and now I just need to draw the silkscreen outline for the body of this part. So to do that I'm going to switch over from uh, on the toolbar here at the cross the top to the draw polygon tool. And 
if you look to the top section of the edit panel, you now have the options, uh, the poly properties, which you can select a simple polyline or a filled polygon, uh, enter in a desired width, and then even uh, even place the uh, the the polygon on any of the layers in this drop down list. It's it's by default pops up to silk screen top, so it's exactly where we want it. So that's I'm going to go ahead and leave it there, and it's set to about. Uh, 0.2 millimeters, which is about 8 mils. Um, so that's a good line width, and I'm going to use it. So uh, I'm just going to follow these grid lines because this is exactly the size of the part that I want. So I'm just going to move to the first, um, the first grid point outside the part, and click and move my mouse, and click at the corner, change directions, move down, click again, move left and then click again and move back to my start point and when I get there the uh, polygon is complete and I can move around freely again so uh, you always want to place a pin 1 designator in the part as well and then also move the uh, reference designator back into position um, you'll you'll uh, that is just the placeholder for the reference designator when you actually place the part on your board it will take the reference designator that you generate that you assign to it from the schematic and it so you don't have to change anything here it's just a placeholder so I'm just gonna go ahead and move that right back to the origin um, and to do that I'm just gonna right click on it go to properties and then on the X coordinate and the Y coordinate I'm just gonna change them both to zero and it jumps right back to this the center of the part okay so to draw the pin one reference designator I mean, uh, the pin one designator, sorry. I'm just going to change my grid to something small because my grid is way too big right now. And so I'm thinking that like 0.2 is probably fine. And then I go to the draw circle tool. And I come in the area around pin number one and I'm zooming in. And I'll just go ahead and click directly above pin one and place a circle there. So you, you begin the circle by clicking in the center, clicking, just a left click, and then you move the, um, the mouse outward until you get the size circle you want, and then click again to, to place it. And that is how you create this PIC 18F46J50 footprint. Um, you have the option to leave the origin exactly where we have now, or uh, you may want to actually select pin one as the origin. Um, so in order to select a pin, you have to return to the selection tool, which is this blue arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the selection tool. And just for the example, I'm going to show you how to set a pin as the origin. So I'm going to place my mouse over pin one and right click. And then from the context menu, use pin as origin and everything shifts over leaving everything in place just moving the origin to pin one so the part is done now we just need to save it name it and then move on to the second video which is creating the symbol so I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the toolbar again and select save and we're gonna give this part a name and it is a well, I'm just, I guess I'll just give it the part number. Um, it's really just a 28 lead uh, uh, SSOP, but uh, we'll just put that in the description. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick 18F46J50, and then in the description, I'll go ahead and uh, put in a 28 lead SSOP. And um, we can go ahead and create a new library here if we need to. Uh, I recommend saving all of your parts in your own libraries. I have many libraries that I've created in the past, so I could choose from these. Or for this example, just so you see how it's done, we'll go ahead and create a new one. And so this is going to be my microchip example library. And I'm not going to enter the description, but if you would like to, you have the option to enter that information here. And now, 
see that the uh, library name has changed and I have my footprint name and I'm just going to go ahead and copy that so I don't have to type it again later and drop it into my notepad and because I'm going to you're going to need that later to uh, put the parts together in the third section of this uh, uh, the third video of this uh, trilogy here so I'm going to select OK the part is saved and in the next video I'll show you how to create the symbol.